That's safe for late evening, late evening discussion, bro. It's too early for that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Late evening discussion. Yeah. We have therapy. Anyway, so the secret to the Gerson therapy is the production of energy on a cellular level. What does that mean? So the way that the human body produces energy on a cellular level is through the breakdown of food. She wants to take this as well. There it is. It's okay, so if everybody's right. more, you stop your, stop your recording and start it over so your file is not so good. <laughs> One file is very difficult to try to transfer. Right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> One huge pile. Stop and start at every five, ten minutes. Whatever. You mind if I show your drink stand? Of Is that good? Can you see Dr. Vickers still? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All eyes are on there you, you go. Dr. Vickers. Yeah, well, it's good. There we go. There we go. I've never seen that. That's a first. <laughs> Double. Yeah. Anyway. So, so again, the whole secret to the Gerson therapy is the production of energy on a cellular level. So inside your cells, again, you have these little things called mitochondria. And mitochondria take glucose and they convert it into energy. Now around your cells, you have something called a cell membrane. That cell membrane is the gatekeeper to what's allowed to go into that cell and what's al allowed to go out of that cell. So, and all of that is determined at the level of the cell membrane and based on the charge at the level of the cell membrane. It accepts things based on the charge. So that cell membrane is made up of fats. And I said, what kind of fats is it made up of? Whatever fats you're feeding it. Whatever fats you're feeding those cell membranes, the body's gonna use, the body's gonna use to maintain that cell membrane. Well, unfortunately today, our diets are loaded with saturated fats. And when we say saturated fats, what are fats saturated with? They're saturated with hydrogen. Now, when we're talking about alkalinity and acidity, you'll always hear those two terms. Alkalinity promotes health, acidity promotes disease. When we're talking about those two things, what are we talking about? pH, what's pH? Potential hydrogen. So when we're acidic, by definition, we have the buildup of hydrogen in the body, particularly at the level of the cell membrane, and that completely changes the charge at the level of the cell membrane. And so oxygen utilization, nutrient absorption, detoxification, all take place in the cell. And so those things get inhibited and you lose the optimal ability to carry out those activities. In order for the mitochondria to produce energy, they need oxygen. They need oxygen. And if they don't have oxygen, sugar, instead of getting broken down into energy, goes through another cycle and it gets broken down into lactic acid, fermentation. That's, the, that's how lactic acid is formed, is through fermentation. And that's because there's no oxygen present. How do you ferment something? You cut off the oxygen to it, right? It's how you make wine, it's how you make kombucha, right? All of that. Anyway, so when the cell is loaded with hydrogen due to saturated fats in our diets, then what happens? As oxygen approaches that cell, the charge at the level of the cell membrane does not accept it. It literally repels it away. And so in 1931, when Otto Warburg won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for demonstrating that cancer, viruses, bac bacteria cannot survive in a properly oxygenated body, this is exactly what he spoke about. He spoke about diet, alkalinity, acidity, the cell membrane, the mitochondria, oxygenating the tissue. You can't oxygenate tissues when you're acidic. And that's why acidity causes disease because it, you, it takes your food and instead of breaking it down into energy, it breaks it down into lactic acid. Cancer is a fungal fermentative cell. You will heal, hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Cancer is fungal and fermentative in nature. And that's because the body's inability to properly oxygenate tissues.
So when you go on this therapy, what's happening? You have to neutralize that hydrogen. You have to reestablish the charge at the level of the cell membrane. So how do you do that? Well, it's a low fat diet with no saturated fats. You have absolutely no saturated fats on this diet, but you're getting flax oil. Flax oil is what is called an essential fatty acid. And the essential means that you have to get it in your diet. The body cannot manufacture it. That's what essential means. And so the body can manufacture saturated fats as it needs them. You really don't need a lot of saturated fat in your diet because the body can manufacture it. But flax oil is called a poly, poly means many, unsaturated fat, meaning all of its bonds have no hydrogen attached to it. And that's why I can put it in the freezer, freeze it. I'll take it out. It's completely frozen in five minutes. It's pure liquid. Because that lack of hydrogen, which stabilizes things, it's not there. So it makes it extremely weak and volatile in terms of its bond structure. But what that bond structure does when it's in the cell membranes, its charge literally pulls, it literally pulls oxygen into the cell. It works as a magnet. It draws the charge of oxygen right into it. That's fascinating. And that is how you properly oxygenate the body, is by drawing it in at the level of the cell membrane. Now you still have hydrogen running around the body as well, and not only at the level of the cell membrane. So how do you neutralize all that hydrogen in the body? There's only one way, and that's the hydroxyl molecule. So when you write hydrogen, it's H positive. When you write it chemically, it's H positive. Hydroxyl molecules are written OH negative. So you've got OH negative alkaline molecules. So every time you drink a juice or eat a raw fruit or vegetable, in your body, it gets broken down into potassium hydroxide. And that's written OH negative. So when those OH negatives are running through your body, they're reacting with the H positive acidic molecule and that goes through a reaction and it forms OH, H, two H's and an O, H2O, water. It reestablishes the charge within the human body and the body's ability now to oxygenate tissues properly goes through the roof. And so when I say you've got to think about how am I going to oxygenate tissues when I get home? Well, first and foremost, the diet. It's ultimately the diet that reestablishes the body's ability to oxygenate tissues by neutralizing the hydrogen charge within the body. That's what it does. That's why alkalinity promotes health, acidity promotes disease. It's that simple. That is the science. It's indisputable. Nobody can argue it. That's it. And that's why people have won Nobel prizes on this stuff, okay? So when you come here, we're reestablishing the body's ability to alkalinize and oxygenate the body. And so fungal cancer cells can no longer survive in that environment. The production of energy raises, the immune system rallies in immune response and starts to destroy cancer. Simple as that. Biochemistry 101. So when I say you have to Think about how am I going to oxygenate tissues? The diet is first and foremost. Then you have other options available to you. The hyperbaric chamber, the beamer mat, which if you can do the beamer mat and other oxygen therapies, that's the best combination because it's the beamer mat that prepares the body, the cells for oxygenation. Why? If you've seen a Beamer video yet, and if you haven't, Stephanie will show you. They put your blood, they put someone's blood on live microscope. And today our blood cells are all clumped together. Whether that's from diet, EMF radiation, who knows? Mostly diet probably. Our cells are agglutinated, which means they're clumped together. Now, why is that a problem? 
because you want the full surface area of a cell membrane to carry out all your body's needs. Detox, nutrient absorption, oxygen utilization, that all takes place at the cell membrane. Well, if the cell membranes are all agglutinated and stuck together, how is that gonna take place optimally? You stick someone on a beamer and you take a sample of their blood and put it on a live microscope, and that's exactly what you see. You see the cells separating and breaking apart from each other, and you see nothing but perfect spherical cell membranes. It's incredible. That's why they say that the Beamer mat oxygenates tissues 30% greater than a hyperbaric chamber. Because all of a sudden, with these full surface areas of cell membranes, you can get oxygen into them. Okay? So if you can prepare the body with the diet, the Beamer mat, and then you add in an oxygen therapy, rectal ozone, bubble and ozone into your enema, right? Hyperbaric chamber, ultraviolet blood irradiation with ozone. It's those things that are bombarding them. Exactly. That's the science, that's the strategy. And that is why the Gerson therapy alone, historically, has been the most powerful therapy in the world to be able to reverse advanced disease. Now, how can that be if you have all the biggest names in our industry telling you that sugar feeds cancer? How is that possible? If sugar fed cancer, we'd be leading everyone straight to their deaths quicker than they'd get there normally. If sugar fed cancer, because you're getting 3,500 calories per day in the form of simple fruit and vegetable sugars. So how is it that the human body is healing with sugar? Because that's how you create energy. The ketogenic diet people tell you, oh no, sugar's bad, it feeds cancer. Well, they're right, in an acidic body. In an acidic body, you'd get the buildup of lactic acid like crazy if you ate sugar. And that would include fruit and vegetable sugars. Unfortunately, fruit, or fortunately, fruit and vegetable sugars come with the hydroxyl ions that alkalinize the system and reestablishes the body's ability to convert food into energy, to oxygenate tissues. So sugar in an alkaline environment heals disease, all disease. We have cured virtually every single degenerative disease using the same exact treatment, and it's based on these principles. So the ketogenic diet people out there, Ty Bollinger, Joe Mercola, Josh Axe, the biggest names in the business are telling people, don't eat fruits and vegetables, they feed cancer. Mm. You have to have a ketogenic diet to heal cancer. That's what they're telling you. <coughs> What's the ketogenic high in? <coughs> Saturated fats. It's insanity. They say, oh, well, the, the, the fats, the body can use the fats to create energy. That's true. The body can use fats to create energy, but it doesn't want to use fats to create energy. Do you know why? Because fats are empty calories. They're calories that don't come along with all the nutrients that you need to run them through the energy cycles. So a diet high in fat, like oils especially, will deplete an already depleted sick body because you require nutrients to run those through the energy cycles. And the nutrients aren't in those fats. So the body will draw off its nutrient reserve, which already has very little left in a sick body, mm -hmm. to run those fats through the energy cycle. And it's a dangerous, dangerous proposition, especially for a sick patient. And those people that I mentioned have millions upon millions upon millions of followers believing their advice. It is insanity. And Ty Bollinger's been here. He, he, I'm in episodes one and eight of his movie. He's been here. He's seen it all. He's heard me talk this science. And he still jumped on the ketogenic bandwagon. And Scott speaks better. <laughs> I mean, that's probably a stop for us. You know? 
And, and here's another thing for weight loss. So you're getting 3,500 calories a day of simple sugars in the forms of fruits and vegetables. They tell you to lose weight, you need to eat maximum 1,200 to 1,500 calories per day to lose weight. Well, if mm. we're given 3,500 calories per day, how is it possible that our patients are losing between a quarter to a half a pound, sometimes a pound per day? I'm down to 13 pounds. Exactly, and you've been here two weeks. 13 pounds in two weeks. Yep. How is that? Because it has nothing to do with caloric intake. It has everything to do with being able to convert those calories into energy. And by reestablishing the integrity of the cell, the cell membrane, the contents within inside the cell, which also is eliminating salt from the diet, no salt, salt and water have swelled up our cells destroying the internal structure and metabolism of the cell. So by bombarding the body with potassium and eliminating the sodium out of the diet, that's the other way we've reestablished the integrity of the cell. So it's not about caloric intake, it's about being able to break calories down into energy and there's not a therapy on the planet that does that better than the Gerson therapy. And there are clinics out there when you call them up and if you say, oh, do you do the Gerson therapy? They say, well, we do a version of Gerson. You know what that means? We don't do the Gerson therapy at <laughs> all. But they know that people are out there looking for the Gerson therapy. And what are they doing? They're telling people they're doing a version of Gerson. So people are going to these clinics, hope for cancer. Hope for cancer is the worst in that respect. Oasis of Hope. They're the other ones out there saying they're doing the Gerson therapy. And the Issels Clinic, they're all out there saying they're doing versions of the Gerson therapy. There are no versions to the Gerson therapy. There's only one Gerson therapy. And if they're not doing 13 juices a day, five coffee enemas a day, the specific Gerson supplement protocol that you saw yesterday that I took you through, they're not doing anything anything remotely similar not even close it's it's blasphemy for saying that they're doing anything remotely similar to gerson all right so this is why the gerson therapy is healing people's disease over the last 120 years with greater consistency than anything out there today it's that simple and so We've taken Dr. Gerson's therapy and we've expounded on it with all these other things that we've added, all these other protocols, the oxygen protocols, the IV protocols, only to build on the foundations that Dr. Gerson laid out. If you knew anything about Dr. Gerson, and I lived with his daughter, Charlotte, I went through Dr. Gerson's handwritten files that she kept in her garage up until his death in 1959. If you knew anything about Dr. Gerson, he was constantly trying to perfect his therapy based on what was coming out in the scientific literature. And he knew that going forward, he would have to continue enhancing his treatment as the world got more and more toxic and people's diets became more and more processed and deficient. He saw the trends, he recognized it, and he set out to warn us about it, which he did in his book before he died. So that is why we do all the things that we do here. We reestablish the body's ability to convert energy on a cellular level, which you do through the breakdown of food. So it's no secret that 70% of your immune system is in your digestive tract. That's where the breakdown of food takes place. So what are we doing? We're healing your digestive tract with the diet as well, not just alkalinizing the body. And then we've added the aloe and the raw spirulina, and that is gonna heal people's digestive tracts like it never has before. All these things together, okay? When you see someone who's sick, what's one of the first things you notice? They're lethargic. Why are they lethargic? because they've lost the capacity to produce energy on a cellular level. And that 
is the secret to curing all disease. That's it. It's simple stuff. Okay? So, you've got this all on tape now. Very good. <laughs> Oh no, did it record? Can you do it again? <laughs> 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 <laughs>